Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kari and today I'm going to be doing a really fun reading vlog project where I'm reading manga for the very first time in my entire life. And as you could surmise from the thumbnail, the manga that I've chosen to read is Sailor Moon. If you've spent any amount of time on my channel before, you'll know that manga is not something that I would typically reach for. The bulk of my reading is really literary fiction, thrillers, and some nonfiction sprinkled throughout. Those are really my preferred genres of reading. But I will say that I have read some graphic novels throughout the past couple of years, and actually one of my favorite books that I've ever read is a graphic novel, and that's Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. So I do know that I can appreciate a more visual style of reading, so I'm extremely curious to to see what I'm going to think of manga because I know that everybody freaking loves reading manga like it's so popular right now so I kind of want to see what it's all about see if I'm going to enjoy it or not and hopefully you'll enjoy coming along that ride with me before we jump in let me know in the comments below if you've ever read the Sailor Moon manga before or if you've watched the anime and what are your thoughts on it I'd be really really curious to know so if you've watched any of my videos before you might be saying to yourself Kari why are you going to read manga you don't read manga. Well, it's actually kind of a random story how I even got to this point because I actually saw two artists who do like fan art of Sailor Moon, Roy Trin and Mrs. Butter D. And it's kind of a long story how I found these artists, but basically I started this new old lady craft diamond painting, which if you know, you know, this is like my old lady craft that I've started doing just like all my other old lady crafts. Like I love knitting for example, but it's my new old lady craft. And so anyway, through diamond painting, I've discovered these two artists and I'm obsessed with the reimagining of these Sailor Moon characters even though I've never watched the anime before I've obviously never read the manga before I just love this art and Roy Trin in particular you can get some of these Sailor Moon characters as diamond paintings which I did <laughs> and I don't know I just I'm just obsessed with this art and it made me want to get into Sailor Moon because I'm like I love this art this is amazing like why not? Why don't we read the manga and see what it's all about? I mean, these characters look so cool. So that's kind of the roundabout way that I got this idea into my head about reading the Sailor Moon manga. And then of course, being me, a book lover, I'm like, okay, well, what edition am I gonna get of this manga? I don't even know if I'm gonna like it yet. And I'm already worried about like, what edition should I get? You know, there's a couple editions. What edition should I get? Which is gonna look the best? Anyway, I'm like doing research and I found this girl's YouTube channel who collects literally everything Sailor Moon she had this really great video about comparing contrasting the different editions of Sailor Moon. I'll link it down below if you're interested. And basically I was convinced that I need to get these Eternal editions. Now there are like 10 I think installments in this edition plus two like short stories maybe? I don't really know what the other two are but basically obviously you can tell this is a big book. This is bigger than your typical manga book What I, from what I've seen. So that really convinced me that I should get this edition because I don't really like reading from small books. And also these ones they have color pages inside. They're not 100% color but there are some color pages like throughout so that's really really cool. I did get the first three editions which considering that there's 12 of them I mean getting three isn't that big of a commitment in case I don't like it but I feel like it's enough to read to really get a solid opinion on it like if I just read one volume of it I feel like that that's not really like a fair chance but if I read three of them then you know that's like a fair shot all right so with all of that preamble out of the way let's jump into volume one of Sailor Moon I'm really excited but kind of nervous I hope that I like it
So I just finished volume one of Sailor Moon, so let's talk about it. I'm not gonna make this spoilery, so no worries if you haven't read this yet and you want to and you don't want me to spoil it, no worries, I'm not going to spoil it. First of all, like I said before, this is my first manga that I've ever read. I've literally never read manga before, so just the fact that you have to read it from right to left, like on the pages themselves, but also the little speech bubbles you have to read from right to left, that took a little bit of getting used to. You know, obviously as an English reader, I'm used to reading from left to right, so that just took a little little bit of getting used to but I imagine that that's pretty normal the first time you read manga but there were some parts where I wasn't quite sure which part I was supposed to read next because of the combination of where the panels like the squares were located plus like where the speech bubbles were I wasn't quite sure which place I was supposed to go to next I mean obviously I figured it out it wasn't that complicated but overall the story itself I really enjoyed it. The story itself is so cute. If you don't know anything about Sailor Moon, basically it follows Usagi, this 14 year old girl, and one day she stumbles upon this cat, Luna, who has like an upside down crescent moon on its forehead. And basically through meeting this cat, she finds out that she's Sailor Moon, AKA like this superhero tasked with saving the earth from the dark kingdom. And then throughout this manga, she encounters some of the other sailors. So first she meets Sailor Mercury and then Sailor Mars, and then she meets Sailor Jupiter, and that's all in this volume that she meets those three girls and so the four of them are basically trying to track down this silver crystal but the dark kingdom this like evil group they're also trying to find it because this crystal has a bunch of energy and you know whatever the energy keeps the dark kingdom alive something like that but obviously sailor moon and the other girls they want to save the world so they want to get the silver crystal first there are also some like love interests throughout because there's also like a male superhero figure named tuxedo mask so like i said before sailor moon is actually usagi like from every day that's her real name and then Sailor Moon is like her superhero persona. The same thing goes for Tuxedo Mask, you know, his superpower alter ego is Tuxedo Mask but in everyday life he's Mamoru and Mamoru and Usagi know each other in real life but they don't know that the other it has the superpower alter ego. One thing that's interesting about Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon is that when they're together they feel like they have this connection or like they feel like they have these memories of each other but they don't really know why. So I'm really interested to see what happens with all that because obviously there's something more there. But overall, I would say that this story is just really fun. And it's really fun for me to read like a different format too. Like that's adding to the fun as well. I think the art is really nice. It's really, really cute. The little characters, the story itself is getting more and more deep and complex. It's not so superficial as it was at the beginning. Obviously when they first introduced the characters and stuff, they can only go so deep. But the more you get to know the characters, it is getting a little bit more and more deep. Like I said, that thing about Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon, that they have some kind of history there that we don't aren't quite sure about yet so you know something's going to develop there I'm sure although I will say that it's kind of bizarre that Usagi is explicitly told to us as being 14 and then at one point in the book they show us that Mamoru is 17 or 18 years old actually I don't remember if they said it was Tuxedo Mask or Mamoru but it's the same person that he's either 17 or 18 years old and he's kind of developing this like love interest with Usagi who's 14 I mean <laughs> Not sure about that. That's, I, I'm kind of blocking that out of my brain, the age thing and kind of acting like they're the same age, but I am still enjoying this. I just think that that's a strange choice. So far, I think I like Sailor Jupiter and Sailor Mars the most, probably, especially Sailor Mars, like she's kind of bitchy and I like that. And also I just wanted to add that I said before that I got the Eternal editions of these and obviously I can't compare these to like the traditional mass paperback version of these books, but I would say this is definitely worth the money because the quality is just so nice and I really like how big the book itself is because obviously there's images inside and you know, the bigger the book, the bigger the images. So I did really appreciate that. And it just feels like a nice book. It's a heavy book. So if you're debating about which edition to get, I would definitely recommend these. I'm not upset that I spent a little bit more money to get these editions, especially now because I'm enjoying the story. So overall, this is a win. I'm really happy about this. I can't wait to get into the second volume.
So I finished volume two of Sailor Moon and this could not be going better. I'm so excited I decided to do this manga reading challenge because volume two was just as good, if not better than volume one. I felt like volume two was even more action packed than volume one. Like I just wanted to keep turning the page to see what was gonna happen next, which obviously is a great feeling when you're reading that you don't wanna put the book down. You just wanna find out what's gonna happen next. And there was just so much action, so much story happening, so much character development and like relationship things happening. I just wanted to know what was gonna happen next. And there's actually a lot of twists and turns in the storyline and something that's kind of crazy and it keeps happening is that people have multiple identities like I think some people in the story have like four or five or even six identities at this point which is making it really fun you know because it adds more intrigue to the story trying to keep everything straight and remember everybody's relationship to each other and each of the identities and everything like it's just a good time and just how the manga is formatted itself like there'll be a cliffhanger panel at the end of a page and like you have to turn the page to see the resolution of that obviously that was planned but i just really enjoy that i just think it's really well done that you have to turn the page like oh no what's gonna happen i have to turn the page to see the resolution of this little cliffhanger and i just really like that. So since I've been loving this second volume of Sailor Moon so much, I do have a few developments to share with you that are quite exciting. One of them is that I've been watching a lot of the anime and I'm loving it. It's so, so cute. And it's actually really accurate to the manga. What's interesting is that they have the same plot points of the manga with like filler things in between each plot point from the manga to kind of drag out the show to make it longer because I think there are like 200 episodes of the anime, I think. So it's just really interesting to see what little filler conflicts and things like that that they put in between the main plot points that come from the manga another really interesting difference that i'm finding between the anime and the manga is that in my opinion the manga is more like emotionally deep than the anime like i feel really emotionally invested in the manga and i feel like i care more about the characters in the manga specifically tuxedo mask and sailor moon aka mamaru and usagi i just feel more about their relationship in the manga than i do in the anime but the other really exciting thing that's developed while i've been reading this is that I told you about the YouTube channel that I watched one of their videos when I was trying to decide which edition of the manga I wanted to get. Her channel is called Ochibo Wolf Collection. Well, I was just watching some more of her videos and she had gone to a comic con, I think it was, and she cosplayed as Sailor Jupiter. And I just thought that that looked really fun. And I started to wonder, you know, there has to be something like that in Paris. You know, Paris is such a huge global city. They have to have something similar to that, whether it be a comic con or something for anime, something for manga, like that has to exist exist, right? And so I did a little Google search and sure enough, just a few days from the day that I did that Google search, there was something called Japan Expo in Paris, which is basically like this huge con centered around Japanese culture. So it's everything to do with manga, anime, martial arts, music, food, like so many different things are celebrated at this exposition. So think like Comic Con on steroids basically. And I just couldn't believe my luck because I thought, you know, maybe there would be something next year or in December not in a few days that I could go to. So I got a ticket and I went. And let me just tell you, it was such a cool experience. Like I cannot tell you how cool it was and how much fun that I had. The convention hall itself was so big. Like it was just outside of Paris because there's no way they could have something so big inside Paris downtown. Like it blew my mind how big it was. I think I did just over 17,000 steps and I didn't see everything. It's insane to me how much walking I did and I know that I didn't see everything. So obviously since I've become such a big Sailor Moon fan now, I was walking around looking for the Sailor Moon merchandise tables and there weren't a ton of stand selling Sailor Moon stuff because obviously it's an older anime, an older manga, but there were stand selling Sailor Moon stuff. So I was really happy about that. In particular, I found this stand called Hanna Vibara. It's these two girls from Spain, I think, and they do the cutest fan art of Sailor Moon. I think I bought everything that they had that had Sailor Moon on it because I loved it so much, but they had art for other anime and other manga there as well. I just didn't know any of it because obviously I'm so new to manga and anime, but even the stuff that I didn't know, I, I thought it was beautiful art. So I spent a big chunk of change at their stands and I'm gonna put the prints that I got at their stand up on my wall because I love them so much. Also, there were other stand selling Sailor Moon art, which I loved, and I got some of those as well. And even like keychains and washi tape. Thank you. 
but there were also merchandising stands that were selling actual Sailor Moon licensed products. And like I said, I've been watching that Ochiba Wolf collection channel and she has all these like little knickknacks of Sailor Moon and I just think they're so cute. And so I saw some of those knickknacks at Japan Expo and I was like, you know what? These would look pretty cool on the bookshelf next to my Sailor Moon manga collection. So I may have indulged and got a few of these little Sailor Moon knickknacks. You can really see how successful this reading vlog is going for me. I went from someone who never read any manga or never watched any anime in their entire life to now I'm buying little knickknacks merchandising stuff from a con. So yeah, I was looking for anything Sailor Moon. I found a good few things. I'm really happy with what I got. But there was just so much happening at this expo. I got so much good food, things that I've never had before. I had no idea what some of this stuff was, but I just wanted to try as much as I could because it was just such a big celebration of Japanese culture. You know, I have to try as much food as I could. And there were just so many demonstrations happening, like I watched sumo wrestling and there were some J-pop concerts happening. And oh my gosh, the cosplay at this place was insane. It looks so fun. It's like Halloween on steroids and I love Halloween. So I love dressing up in costume for Halloween. So this was like Halloween on steroids. These people's costumes, they had to put so much time, so much money, so much effort into these costumes. They were incredible, so beautiful, like truly pieces of art, these cosplay costumes. And it just looks so fun. All the cosplayers, like just watching them, it convinced me that next year I need to go back to Japan Expo and I need to do cosplay. <laughs> So like I said, I had done over 17,000 steps and I didn't see everything. Like I spent the whole day there. And when I got home, I was like, should I go again tomorrow? Because the whole expo is five days. It's Thursday through Sunday. And I went on the first day, I went on Thursday. And so on Thursday night, I was like, should I go back tomorrow on Friday? But in the end, I decided not to. But then all day Friday, I was like, I just wanna go back. Like it was so much fun. I didn't see everything, like let's go back. So I ended up buying a second ticket to go back on Saturday. And so I was able to see even more. I was able to go look at things again that I really appreciated on Thursday. I went back to a few stands that I had bought stuff on Thursday and bought even more stuff. And I got to try new food and see new demonstrations. And it was just so fun.
So basically all that to say, this reading vlog could not be going better. <laughs> I've turned into a huge Sailor Moon fan, a huge Japanese culture enthusiast, even though I still, I, I don't claim to know very much at all. This is my first foray into Japanese culture at all, but I'm loving what I'm experiencing so far. And I can't wait to jump into the third volume of the manga. This could not be going better. <laughs> As you can see, I even have Sailor Moon clothing now. <laughs> I guess this makes me a real Sailor Moon nerd now that I can wear clothing with Sailor Moon on it. I actually had a friend come visit me here in Paris who's from the US, and so I had ordered some Sailor Moon shirts to her house to bring me. So this is actually from the US, it's from Box Lunch, but I do have it here with me in Paris and I'm very excited about it. And like I said, I think this makes me a real Sailor Moon nerd now. Anyway, volume three of Sailor Moon, it was just as good as the other two. I had said this before for volume two that it gets more and more emotionally deep and I feel more and more connected to the characters, especially Mamoru and Usagi, and that continued to be true in this volume like I don't know I just care so much about them which is very strange for me because normally I don't really care about relationships and stories and I don't read romance I'm not really into that but here's something about the story it makes me care about Mamoru and Usagi I just really like how much Mamoru cares about Usagi and actually there's another new character in this book named Chibiusa and Mamoru just really cares about that character as well and I don't know I just love him I think he's so sweet and I like learning more about his backstory and everything because I think it was in volume one that I said that every time Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask meet, they feel like they know more about each other than they do, and like they feel like they have some kind of memory together, and over time we've learned more and more about that, and here it's really explored like why they feel like they know so much about each other. And I do still feel like the manga is way more emotionally deep than the anime, because I have still continued to watch the anime, and I am loving it. I really think it's cute, but I find it a lot more superficial and like serial, because you are supposed to be able to watch it like in any order like if a kid just turns on the tv and sailor moon is on like they should still be able to understand the episode even if they haven't watched the hundred episodes that were supposed to come before that but this really assumes that you already know the backstory and it builds on that i was a little bit sad because mars mercury and jupiter were in this volume a lot less and sailor venus who arrived in volume two she was in this one a lot more it was really sailor moon and sailor venus the most and i was kind of sad about that because i think i said this before that sailor mars and sailor jupiter are my favorites so far and they really weren't a part of this story a lot and I know when I talked about volume 2 that I said that everybody has like multiple identities well this just added on even more identities to some people like Usagi and Mamoru like their identities are multiplying <laughs> but I do still think it's fun to like keep track of and to remember who's who and who knew who and what timeline and these different identities I am having a good time with that I will say
say that for the first two volumes, the villains were pretty easy to keep track of, who's who, who works for who, that kind of thing. But in this volume, there were some new villains introduced and I did find them harder to keep track of, like who's who. And I do think that's kind of a shame, but I'm hoping that when I continue to the next volume, that'll become more clear. I would say that that's probably the only negative that I have about this volume is that I couldn't keep the villains apart because there are a good few of them and they didn't really have like differentiating qualities about them. So I couldn't follow which villain was doing what, but it's it's not a huge thing because I care more about like the main characters. But overall, I love this volume just as much as I love the first two volumes. I'm really happy that I read it. I'm just like binging them. I'm finding that obviously manga is really bingeable that you could just sit down and read this in a couple hours, which that is something that I found interesting. I thought this would be a lot faster to read, but it does take like a good couple hours to get through if you, you know, you appreciate the art for each panel. It does take some time to get through, which I'm liking because like I said before, these books are a bit more expensive, especially because I bought the Eternal editions and I want to spend some good amount of time in the books to really get my money's worth. So I am happy that these are taking longer to read than what I was expecting. So I am done with the first three volumes and now I feel like I want to read the next volume. This whole challenge was me reading the first three volumes and I felt like that was giving it a good chance and I'm glad that I gave it three volumes to give it a chance because I feel super invested in it now, obviously. Like, I feel like such a big fan now. And now I'm really excited to read the fourth volume. All right, guys, so that's the end of this literary fiction girly reads manga for the first time reading vlog where I read the first three volumes of Sailor Moon. I just had the best time reading this. I'm so happy that I did this. I found a new favorite series, just something really different from what I usually read. And I'm just surprised at how much I loved it. And not only did I love the manga itself, I've been loving watching the anime. I had the best time going to Japan Expo and just learning more about Japanese culture in general. Like this has just been the best reading vlog ever for me, like personally, finding so many new favorite things. I did buy the next two volumes in the manga series. I have volume four here with Sailor Jupiter and volume five with Sailor Venus. So now I have the first five volumes in the Sailor Moon manga. I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to adding to the collection. Like I said before, there are 12 volumes in this collection. So I am looking forward to keep adding to the series and continuing on in this story. Something else that I really appreciate about this edition of the books is that there are translation notes that the translators did in the back of each volume. And so it explains things that are mentioned throughout the story that a Japanese reader would understand no problem. Like it's a cultural thing that they would just get. But if you're a reader from a different culture that maybe you wouldn't necessarily understand some of the things that are referenced, they have that explained for you in the back. And I really appreciate that because I'm so new, not only to manga, but just the Japanese culture in general. So I've really actually learned a lot through reading this manga and reading the translation notes because throughout the whole story, for example, they're all referring to each other as their name. So for example, Usagi and then adding C-H-A-N to the end. Now, I'm not sure if it's Chan or Chan. I'm just going to say Chan. So like Usagi-chan. And so they've explained that when you add C-H-A-N to someone's name, it's a way to express that the person who's speaking thinks of the person that they're addressing as a friend, as opposed to using the more distance S-A-N, San. So if they said Usagi-san, that would be showing a distance in a more probably like respectful tone rather than like a friendly tone. So just little things like that I've really appreciated and I've learned a lot. But also what's really funny is that at one point Sailor Mercury is at like cram school so she's doing like extra studying and they have to use these CDs in the computer for her lessons and the translators put a note in the back about what a CD is. <laughs> and also in the same vein a little bit later in the story they talk about renting a video and so they explain like how you could rent DVDs and VHSs because obviously when this manga was created Netflix didn't exist you couldn't just stream stuff so I just find that really funny because it's true a young reader today wouldn't have those references and so while most of the translation notes are about Japanese culture like I said before there are these little things thrown in like this that are really more for a young reader today who wouldn't get the global cultural references from the 90s by the way this is the second box lunch shirt that I had my friend from the US bring me I love it I just think it's so cute I'm happy to add it to my nerdy clothing collection as well as all the other things that I bought at Japan Expo. I'm just so happy with everything that happened in this vlog. So thank you so much for coming along with me in this vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it as well. If you're a fan of the Sailor Moon manga or the Sailor Moon anime, I would love to hear about it in the comments. I'd love to chat with you about it. And if you have any recommendations for me, whether it's Sailor Moon related or con related or cosplay related, anything like that, definitely put it in the comments. I would love to chat with you about it. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. I would really, really appreciate it. And subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you back. I'm definitely going to have more Sailor Moon related things on my channel in the future now that I've realized that I'm such a big fan. 
so you don't want to miss that make sure you subscribe and i'll talk to you again next time bye